Hello, thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be talking about z-scores. So in previous videos, we talked about the normal distribution, and we talked about a way to utilize the normal distribution with something called an empirical rule. And the empirical rule is really great because it gives you one, two, or three standard deviations away from the mean. So it gives you a nice snapshot of the data. However, the problem with it is that it's very specific to that one, two, or three standard deviations from the mean. So what do you do if you want a measurement that's not exactly one, two, or three? You calculate what's called a z-score. So it's a very similar idea to the empirical rule. It's still going to give you the distance from the mean. So the z-score formula, I'll just write it out. It's going to take the observation, so the measurement or whatever that number is, and it's going to subtract the mean. So essentially what it's doing in that numerator is it's measuring both distance and direction from the mean. So if you have a negative z-score, it's going to be below the mean. If you have a positive z-score, it's above the mean, and it's going to measure the distance from the mean. But it's going to do it in the number of standard deviations, and to do that, we need to divide then by standard deviation. And that tells you how far it is from the mean, based on how many standard deviations away it is. So how many standard deviations away? So in our last example, we had a mean height for females of 65, and their standard deviation was 2.7. Now, I am going to calculate a z-score for my height and I think, and I may have shrunk a little bit, but I think that my height is 67 inches. So to calculate my z-score, I am that observed value. So I'm this here. So my height, 67 inches, minus the mean, which we said was 65. And I'm going to divide then by standard deviation, which is 2.7. So when I calculate my z-score, I come up with 0.74. So what does that mean? I am 0.74 standard deviations above the mean. So because I'm positive, it's above, so I'm taller than the mean, or I'm above or to the right of that mean on the curve. So a z-score measures distance, direction from the mean in standard deviations. So if we go on the next um, icon or our curve, we can show you where those z-scores would be located on the curve. So here's our curve. Remember, that's that normal distribution because it's bell-shaped, it's unimodal, it has one peak, it's symmetric, and the ends go out to positive and negative infinity. So here, our mean is the center, so that was, remember, 65. But if you go out one standard deviation, that would also be one z-score. So here's one z-score below. Oops, I forgot my c. And then if we went out here, that would be maybe one z-score above. And still, like the empirical rule, that would include 68% of our data. If we went out two z-scores, We would have 95%, and that would be two z-scores, but this would be a negative z-score because it's below. This would be a positive z-score because it's above. And then if we went out three z-scores, just like we had with the empirical rule, that would be 99.7% of data would be within three z-scores. And again, that would be negative because it would be below. Now the point of this, again, is because you're not always going to be exactly the three, two, or one. So for example, me at 0.74, I would be somewhere between the mean and that one z-score. So I would be somewhere in this area. But the z-score is beneficial in that it measures the distance and direction from the mean in standard deviation. So how many standard deviations away are you? So that's our conversation on z-scores. Hopefully that's helpful for you in the future. I'll see you in future videos.